Welcome, fellow investigators. Today, we embark on a journey through the chilling annals of history, delving into the depths of depravity and intrigue as we unveil the top 10 brutal crimes ever committed. But why, you may ask, should you subject yourself to such harrowing tales? In a world where darkness often lurks beneath the veneer of civilization, understanding the darkest chapters of our past becomes not only a matter of curiosity, but a crucial exploration of the human psyche. These stories, though haunting, hold within them invaluable lessons about the fragility of morality, the complexities of justice, and the haunting capabilities of the human mind, so, if you possess an insatiable hunger for knowledge, if you're drawn to the inexplicable allure of the forbidden, or if you simply seek to comprehend the incomprehensible, then join us on this spine-tingling odyssey. But beware, for once you peer into the abyss, the abyss also peers into you, prepare to be captivated, disturbed, and utterly transfixed as we uncover the top 10 brutal crimes that have left an indelible mark on history. Number 1, The Papine Sisters. France 1926. Two French sisters named Lear and Christine Papine used to work as live-in servants for the Lancelin family. They used to do their chores efficiently and with honesty, but suddenly everything changed. One day in February 1933, they waited for the sun to set and in pitch dark, brutally murdered their employees. These sisters never showed any signs of violence or frustration before. It would be right to say that they were reserved and quiet. Who knew that these sisters could commit such a heinous crime? Wanna know what they did to their employees? They gouged out their eyes and smashed their faces. On the exact same night, Mr. Lancelin came home and started looking for his family. A wave of horror filled his body when he found his wife and child lying dead on the floor in a pool of blood. He called the police and they began searching for the Papine sisters. They found the Papine sisters locked in their room and after getting a locksmith to open the door, the police found them lying on the bed together with a bloody hammer nearby. The Papine sisters admitted to the crimes right away. During Lear's release from prison in 1943, she was able to obtain employment at a French hotel under a false identity. She died in 1982. Christine, on the other hand, became extremely upset about being separated from her sister and eventually had a mental breakdown. She attempted to gouge out her own eyes and passed away in an asylum in 1937. Number 2, Diane Dan's case. Have you heard about a woman who ate her children for her own selfish will? I mean not literally. In 1983, Springfield, Oregon, a woman named Diane Downs shot her three kids and took them to the hospital. Her son was paralyzed from the waist down, one of her daughters passed away while traveling to the hospital, and another suffered a stroke. According to Diane, a strange man tried to steal her car before opening fire on all of them. But ultimately, the authorities found her hidden diary which described her obsession with a married man who did not want kids. This led to her being arrested. She received a life sentence that included 50 years in prison. Number 3, Catherine Knight. Australia's first woman to get a life sentence without the possibility of release was Catherine Knight. Late on the night of February 29, 2000, pinned and beheaded her partner John Price at his home in the New South Wales town of Aberdeen, northwest of Newcastle. Mr. Price had been stabbed at least 37 times in various parts of both the front and back of his body. Knight then prepared her murdered partner's body for dinner. She fried chunks of his body, thinking her naive kids would eat them. She even set the table and gave the children place cards to follow. Knight, who was a highly skilled meat worker, subsequently became the first Australian woman to be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Number 4, The Black Dahlia. Elizabeth Short was an ambitious actress who put her quest for fame above all else. She had no idea how she would get it, as the victim of a horrific crime that has plagued America for many years. On January 15, 1947, Elizabeth Short, who was 22 years old at the time, was discovered dead by a young mother and her daughter, age 3. Her body had been slashed in two and lay horribly deformed in the suburban grass of Los Angeles, her body broke into two sections about a foot apart. Her intestines had been taken out, folded, and put back into her abdomen. There were ligature marks on her wrists, skin grafts everywhere, 
and drained blood throughout her body. The worst thing, though, was probably her face. With a jokeresque smile on her face, the murderer had sliced it open from the corners of both sides of her mouth to her ears. A week later, someone claiming to be the murderer called an editor at the Los Angeles Examiner. He stated that he had saved mementos and would be mailing them over, he did exactly what he had promised. Four days later, a mail worker produced a letter addressed to the examiner. Included were pictures, Elizabeth Short's contact book, business cards, and birth certificate. But, as with so many previous well-known murders, the accompanying media circus merely served to bewilder the inquiry. Number 5, Jack the Ripper. Arguably the most notorious unsolved serial killer in history, continues to linger in the back streets of Whitechapel, England. Five sex workers were brutally murdered in London in 1888 by an unidentified assailant who stabbed and disfigured them while they were out on the streets. The offender then made fun of the police and media, even mailing a kidney belonging to the victim to a local newspaper. Researchers continued to propose new possibilities about the identity of this legendary predator, even after 130 years have passed since the atrocities. But it's unlikely that we'll ever discover the Whitechapel fiend's true identity. Number 6, The Long Island Serial Killer. This one is especially scary because there's a strong possibility that the Long Island serial killer is still at large. In 2010, authorities searched a forested area near Jilgo Beach, Long Island, in search of the body of a missing sex worker. Little did they know they would soon find four deceased ladies there. Over time, this resulted in additional findings, and the list was attributed to at least 10 deaths in all. The matter is still under investigation, and the police have asked the public for assistance in finding the offender. Number 7, The Axeman of New Orleans. An unidentified assailant stalked Italian and Italian-American store owners in New Orleans, Louisiana, in silence between 1918 and 1919. Using a chisel, the Axeman would smash through door panels to gain entry into stores located all across the city. Once inside, he would use an axe or other weapon to attack the owners, leaving their remains where they perished. He seemed to be driven by racial animosity and never took anything from his victim, but in March 1919, things took a weird turn. In a letter to the local press, the Axeman threatened to retaliate on March 13, but only if someone was listening to jazz music at home. As expected, nobody was killed that evening, and the Axeman quickly vanished from sight. Number 8, The Hello Kitty Murder. In the bustling streets of Hong Kong, amidst the neon-lit alleys and crowded markets, lurked a chilling mystery that would come to be known as the Hello Kitty Murder case. It was a tale of innocence turned into darkness, of betrayal and depravity that shook the city to its core. Three guys kidnapped Van Manyi, a 23-year-old nightclub hostess, in 1999. They harassed her for a month prior to her death, while it's unclear if the overdose of drugs caused her death or if the men were at fault. The discovery of Van Manyi's body sent shockwaves throughout Hong Kong, capturing the attention of the media and the public alike. But it was the presence of a Hello Kitty doll at the crime scene, its innocent visage juxtaposed against the horrors of the murder that lent the case, its eerie moniker. It was discovered that when she passed away, the men disemboweled her and placed her skull inside a massive Hello Kitty doll. Moreover, they brutally tortured her to the point where she begged them to kill her. All three of the offenders were convicted of manslaughter. Many people consider the Hello Kitty murder to be among the most brutal and vicious cases to ever appear in a Hong Kong court. Number 9, St. Valentine's Day Massacre, in the roaring 1920s, amidst the glitz and glamour of Chicago's Prohibition era, a chilling event unfolded that would forever stain the city's history, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. On the morning of February 14, 1929, in the heart of Chicago's north side, seven members of George Bugs Moran's gang gathered at a garage at 2122 North Clark Street, unaware of the fate that awaited them. As they went about their business, two men dressed as police officers and armed with Tommy guns stormed into the garage, along with several accomplices. 
What followed was a hail of gunfire that echoed through the streets, leaving the seven men dead or dying in pools of blood. The brutality of the massacre sent shockwaves throughout the nation. It soon became clear that the massacre was a result of a bitter rivalry between Moran's gang and that of Al Capone, the notorious mob boss who ruled over Chicago's underworld with an iron fist. Capone, cunning and ruthless, sought to eliminate Moran and solidify his grip on the city's lucrative bootlegging operations. In the aftermath of the massacre, law enforcement scrambled to unravel the tangled web of clues and suspects. Despite numerous arrests and interrogations, including Capone himself, no one was ever convicted of the crime. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre marked a turning point in America's perception of organized crime, shining a spotlight on the brutal tactics employed by gangsters like Capone. Number 10, The Freeway Phantom, this is tantamount to my insensitivity to people, especially women. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. One of the victims of the pedophilic serial killer Freeway Phantom, who preyed on young black ladies aged 12 to 17, left this note in one of his victims' pocket. In the early 1970s, the nation's capital was gripped by fear as a mysterious predator prowled the highways, leaving a trail of terror in his wake. The first chilling encounter occurred on April 25, 1971, when 13-year-old Carol Spinks vanished while walking to the store. Her lifeless body was discovered days later alongside a freeway. Over the course of the next year, five more girls would fall victim to the Phantom's sinister spree, despite a massive manhunt and intense public scrutiny. The freeway Phantom eluded capture, leaving investigators baffled and the community on edge. The killer seemed to strike at random, leaving no discernible pattern or motive in his wake, yet, despite their best efforts, the Phantom remained one step ahead taunting investigators with cryptic messages and false leads. Though decades have passed since the last murder, the memory of those innocent girls continues to haunt the collective consciousness of Washington, D.C. Their death serving as a solemn vow to never forget and to never stop searching for justice as we conclude our journey through these ten brutal murders, it's impossible not to be deeply affected by the darkness that humanity is capable of. Each story is a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the depths of depravity that some individuals can sink into. While it's easy to be overwhelmed by the sheer horror of these crimes, it's important to remember the resilience of the human spirit and the tireless efforts of law enforcement and investigators who work tirelessly to bring justice to the victims and closure to their families. Let us use these stories not as sources of fear but as reminders to cherish every moment with our loved ones and to strive for a world where such atrocities are nothing but distant memories. Together, let's stand against violence and advocate for a future where compassion and empathy reign supreme. Thank you for joining us on this journey. If you found this video informative or thought-provoking, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And until next time, stay safe, stay vigilant and never forget to spread love and kindness wherever you go.